Hi and welcome to Angling View. Today you join me at the uh, fantastic Oats Lakes complex um, on Cedar 62. Um, got a variety of uh, methods that I'm going to try today and try and get a few different films uh, shot out over the next few weeks. Um, since I'm back to work and uh, it's going to be uh, be busy. So the first one that I'm going to do today is meat and pellet in the feeder. Now I will get the kit out and we'll We'll have a little look at that first and then we'll have a look at the bait. So as usual, the trusty uh, 11 foot yank and bank uh, with a TDM reel. Uh, we've got a six pound dial hypersensor on today. And what we're gonna use to get these this meat and pellet it down to the deck is one of these. And that is a Guru 25 gram um, cage feeder. And if I just hold this up, that's uh, to camera, that's what we're using, the X-Safe system. Now, with these uh, X-Safe systems, they come with a couple of clips, if I find it. So they come with this one here, uh, and this is obviously if you want to have it sliding across the line with a little um, little bit of uh, a loop on the top, and that'll let it slide up and down the line with feeder beads or anything like that. What you'd like to do, uh, this one, Today I've put the X-Safe system in, which is obviously running free line, so it's got a stem in there like you would do with your method feeders uh, or anything like that. So that runs up to a quick change bead, as you can see there, or a quick stop bead, whatever you want to call it, I call them quick change beads. Um, and the hook link, uh, I've used um, 015 power line and that is about six inches long and that's down to a pr36 hook and that is down then to a little hair with a quick stop on and that's where we're going to attach the meat um, of today's uh, session so what i'm going to do is just hook that back on there I'll put that down and then we can go through the bait so depending on what venue um it will depend on how you're gonna feed feed the meat um, in regards to what size. If you're sort of looking at F1, a lot of F1s and or small F1s and you don't really want to target the bigger fish, um, then obviously you can do a sort of a smaller cubing of meat. Now, what I've gone for is a sort of four to six mil sized, um, slightly squashed. Um, and what I'm gonna be doing with them, and I'll just show you is I've got them soaked in water to my side um, and I've got I get a handful of it and I'm mixing it up um, here and all I'm doing is adding some hard fishery 4 mil pellets to it so that's what you're ending up really with you're just mix, mixing it together and that's what's going to go in the feeder um, so really really simple um, I'm keeping it in water as you do when it's this time of year it's warm even though there's not much sun about today it's still very warm and you don't want your meat to dry out um, you want it to be as soft as it can be so I've used spam you can use chopped luncheon meat or whatever you feel that is necessary to that, that you get along with um, you can use hemp in, in it as well but um, I find pellet works to target um, usually the little bit better fish um, a towel is definitely essential when you when, when you fish fishing meat. Um, it can get a little messy. It can you don't want it to get around um, sort of you you know your you top of your um, reel. You don't want it to be on your pole if you're fishing. So do clean your gear down if you do get your meat. Um, the fat will just eat away and it's just just not good. Um, so in regards to hook baits, what I've got is a slightly firmer style meat, a bit like a continental meat. Um, this is smoked, but I have also got um, an, an unsmoked one as well. And it's just a bit firmer to stay to stay on the hook with us casting out, um, and that's really it. What we'll do is we'll spin the, the camera, get a good angle, hopefully. <laughs> We've got a bit of an all right peg for filming today, um, and then we'll get we'll put the, the you know the bait in the feeder, and uh, we'll have a look at where we're fishing, um, and and a little bit about what we look for when we're fishing to an island. Right, guys, so. <laughs> When you're looking at uh, fishing to uh, uh, any sort of island or um, reed or obstruction, there's a few things that you need to look at. I mean, this is not a long distance chuck. And nine times out of 10 would be an underarm. It's just enough to get an overarm casting where you can control it without yanking it everywhere for a little bit more accuracy. 
as you can see straight away I'm looking at there's an undercut bank there obviously the, the water's down which I know it's going to be quite shallow out there and meet slow falling bay courts creates a lot of um, cloud in the water uh, the shallow sort of close to an island should be a good place um, to, to, to look at it targeting with me but the first thing that you've got to look around yeah, is the any trees now luckily above us we've, the trees are to the sides so it enables me to cast the other thing to look at is the over any overhanging branches now you can see the trees are, are far back uh, so we've got it we're able to drop it down uh, there's no overhanging bushes we've just got to be accurate to get into that gap um, really is the, is the key uh, without hitting either side of these bushes um, or casting long now we've got it on a line clip uh, as you would imagine for for being accurate um, I've located this sort of bay area slightly to my left uh, where almost sort of left of the 62 post um, is where I would aim to go it's a bit far for, for the pole um, so I've opted to use the feeder now meat feeder really you don't want to be going much more than 20 30 yards purely because um we uh, it will come out so what we'll do is we'll just get the tackle ready we'll, we'll fill up the feeder show you how to get that on and we'll we'll crack on right guys so we're going to have a look at putting everything together now as you can see um we start with putting the the bait on now the reason we do this is obviously we don't want it to come off while we sort of uh, we sort of, we don't want things to come out of the feeder while we're uh, messing about with uh, hook baits. Now this can obviously be any sort of thing. If you've got pellets in there, if you've got maggots, you want that bait on first. So straight into the little quick stop. There's a hole on the end with the needle. Uh, pulling that line tight across the, the shaft of the needle. I've just got this finger onto the line to keep it tight. While we just put that little bit of meat on. So just push that quick stop through and then pull off the needle and gently pull that meat down to the quick stop so there you go it hangs just underneath the hook and then we go to fill the feeder so we've got that that uh, that meat and pellet in there like I said before just squashed in there put a bit more hard pellet in there just to get that attraction and then you fill it in the cage like you would do a normal uh, a normal cage feeder just push that in and then the the expansion of water when it hits will push out the meat and the pellets just push those in like that like I say you've probably only got 20 to 30 yards chuck with them really it's with it being meat obviously it's not as strong as having pellets in there we're looking for that small gap it's not the easiest of casts um, looking for that small gap just in the reeds bang on right next to the to that undercut there we're just sinking the tip with no, no, no wind on it sinking the tip so it sits right in that place and then we've got the the, the rod as low as we come to the to the water so we can see all, all the bites there's no turbulence from wind not that there's any wind around today but there's no it's all taut and it's it's not drifting on the tail of the water or anything like that it's just right underneath and it's really important that you you sink that line and you have the tip as low to your can especially if you're fishing big venues like reservoirs or ponds um, it's not always the case if you're fishing rivers sometimes you have to have it up just purely because you're fishing in jungle or um, you know you've got higher bushes and things like that in but any sort of match scenario or anything that you where you're on a pond um, really you need to be having it uh, quite low down to the water and uh, we've got a little couple of indications that, as I say I've, I've done no pre-baiting and um, that, that's the um, that's the first first cast that we've done so well, there's a, a swirl just around it so obviously there's, there's fish there which is, which is good um, as I said before it's quite shallow there um, which is why I thought you know the meat might be quite good there um, fingers crossed it won't take too long uh, to get a bite but you, yes you could fish the pole um, up there um, but it's just, it's just out of reach of 16 meters um, and I, you know this this method I wanted to to show you anyway w with the meat itself uh, using the spam meat you, you can use a chopped meat or anything like that you can run it through a um, 
a, a riddle or anything like that kind of thing or a meat cutter to get small dice or you can just chop it roughly like I've done and then um, crush it with your hands and uh, mix the pellets in it makes no difference um, but what, what I would say is leave it not too long um, to start off with as I say on most of my videos that's uh, anything to do with a feeder especially when we're uh, starting a session it, 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 especially in summer and when it's a bit warmer you don't really want to be leaving it much more than two minutes to start off with even for sort of your first 10 casts you don't really want to be two minutes more than two minutes in there uh, once the feed's in um, and then after that you want to be looking at getting maybe uh, three to four minutes tops after that um, it just keeps the fish interested keeps the the, the bell ringing uh, with the feed going in uh, and obviously building building your peg into his first fish feels like a, a small f1 a strange little bite um uh, a back and then a, a pull forward nice little fish to start off with Now, when you're uh, when you're hooking, hooking, unhooking your fish, make sure you give yourself a little bit of, of line to work with. Obviously, this this one's going a bit bonkers. Hooked perfectly in the lip. Just hooked perfectly in the lip there. We're getting, getting back in the water. But that giving yourself that little bit of a, a little slack line allows you to manoeuvre about. And it, what happens if you've got too much tension? Uh, it means you can sort of snap hook links off, snap quick stops, all that kind of stuff. And obviously we don't, don't want to be doing that. So again, repeat that process. Now, you've got to remember when you're using meat, it's um it's a high attraction kind of bait so what you want to be be doing is making sure that everything is done methodically you d it, it attracts it'll, it can attract a lot of fish into your peg and the, the main thing is you don't want to be um striking at those bites that are just um liners really because there's going to be fish that's going to swim over top of you and you really want to wait up for a, a good pickup bite or you want to like if you're fishing here there's no there's nowhere for them to go so you, you may get a drop back bite but just don't don't yank it just reel into it and then if you feel a bit of resistance then gently pull away because it, what happens if you just rag it through when you get a, a drop back you may just pull it straight through the fish and then you'll be foul looking them and if I look at your peg and you don't need that at all um, it's uh, it does attract quite a lot of fish and I can see that there's there's fish stirring around there and just that little bit of meat that's the thing is fishing with meat sometimes it, it can come off mid cast and I just saw that drop off um, mid cast so I think it was probably because it was it was, it was a little bit um, small, if I'm honest. And you just want to make sure. Sometimes you get a little bit of a, a knotty bit in your meat, and doesn't always uh, take to it. So just make sure that you that it's hooked, it's in properly, that on properly that meat. So try that again. This is.
to another little fish now. Seems like another F1. Only a, a nice sh shy bite for an F1. That quite um, soft bites to today. Actually, normally uh, they're uh, <laughs> having, having your uh, your rod off. Now it's how I keep that that rod nice and low. I um, don't want to risk pulling it out until we've got it underneath the net. It's a beautiful little fish that. And he's in the net. This is why these long landing net handles are, are really useful. Take off some of that line. Just in his bottom left. Just in that little small look. I'm just holding up a lovely little little fish. A little bit of a deformed tail, but he's a lovely little uh, little fish that's getting back. Um, see if we can we can snatch another. another bite into another fish a bit more of an uh, aggressive bite it feels a little bit better fish as well not coming straight to the surface this time plodding along I think it's absolutely huge but I think it's definitely a, a better stamp fish than what the what the last one was swimming towards us now oh, it's just a little bit better stamped F1. It's in the net. Let me just take a bit, a bit, of, a bit of line out so we can lift him up. Again, looks beautifully in the lip. Just in that corner. Another snapper. Lovely F1 this one. Picture perfect. What a lovely little fish. That's there. Just getting back. Let's see if we can catch another one. Another thing when you're sort of fishing any type of feeder, just make sure that you've got everything to hand. So, the feeder's here right next to my hand. I can just grab the feeder and start winding it whenever I want. Um, I've got the rod rest attached to my box. Um, it, if you haven't got a box and you prefer a chair, I'd suggest getting one of those sort of Corum um, carp chairs, whether you can have like um, attachments and things to it so you can still have a chair. Um, or there's the Preston box where it's sort of like a seat uh, attachment to it, if that's what you prefer. <clears throat> and then again having your sort of your landing nets to hand um i've got the feed to hand it just makes your life a little bit easier when you when you're fishing even if it's a pleasure session you're not getting up getting down getting up getting down obviously that disrupts your peg to another fish feels like another, another f1 I'm all the way to the bag this one. Oh, it's a little mirror. A little mirror this time. It's a nice fish to end in if we can get him in. One thing you'll notice as well with these, with the, with the fish that we've uh, that we've caught, all of them have been hooked perfectly in that bottom lip, and it just means that they've, they've sucked in that piece of meat, and it's just 
cook them perfectly with that, with that um, quick stop which is obviously exactly exactly what we're uh, looking to do not a massive fish but a nice little fish fish to end on and uh, it's getting back now as you can see obviously it's uh, it's a it's a pretty dangerous method and um, you know pretty deadly um, so you know give it a try join us on the Facebook group the Instagram at angling underscore for you and angling for you um, on the group and uh, hope you enjoy it check out there's a lot of videos on there now covering most things if there's anything else you want to see just drop it in the comments um, thanks again for watching come down yourself to Oaks Lakes let's to, to Tom um, for, for inviting us down and uh, tight lines.